We haven't seen normal since the early weeks of 2020. But then again, what is normal anymore? For the first time in the 70 year history of the little 500, the race is going virtual. The bikers will ride, not on the black cinder track at Bill Armstrong Stadium, but on your screens, racing for that same coveted little 500 title. It's time to find out who will be victorious in the first ever virtual Little 500. Hello everybody, I'm Evan Kamiko and welcome to day one of the inaugural virtual Little 500 race. Joining me on the call for today's virtual time trial and tomorrow's virtual Little 500 is none other than Brett Smith and Dr. GC, Galen Clavio. Brett, Doc, thanks for joining me on this beautiful virtual Saturday morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks, this Brett. is going to be exciting. Yeah, Evan, this is, this is a lot of fun. Really looking forward to seeing what happens over the next couple of days. So let's get right into it, guys. We're happy you're here. Brett, we'll start with you. What are you looking forward to about this weekend's virtual event? Well, I just think this is the first step to normalcy out of COVID. Like, really, these racers or these riders have just been really itching to get back into competition. And this is just really a historic event for not only Indiana, but the Little 500 as well. And I'm really excited to see the strategy and the effort these racers put forward. So, Doc, kind of explain to everyone at home what's going on this weekend. What can they look forward to? What is the virtual Little 500? The virtual Little 500, if, if you've ever seen a, a bike race and then you've also seen eSports, it's like we're combining the two in a way. And it's a really cool new way for people to get into competition with one another. Uh, this is being powered by Echelon Racing which does a whole series of these types of races that are set in a bunch of different spots around the world. You've got riders that can compete from pretty much anywhere. You just need a trainer and ideally a camera and you're good to go. Today's event is going to be the shorter of the two events that we have over the course of this weekend. We've got the timer trials, which probably only last about 30 minutes or so as all of the riders, almost 60 of them who have registered for this, are going to be competing against one another to see who has the fastest time uh, in the a virtual Little 500 race. So a small number of laps and essentially all about individual effort and what you're going to be able to do by yourself on the trainer. Tomorrow's events are going to be a little bit longer as we're going to have road races for both the women's riders at 10 o'clock in the morning and then the men's riders at noon. And again, over 50 people total have registered for those two races, and there's, I think, still time to register if you'd like to, uh, to hop on the, the trainer and get in there. But uh, in that race, you're going to have more of the elements of what a normal echelon race would look like, uh, what a normal virtual race would look like. So we're looking forward to seeing how both of these play out. We've got some fun and famous names from the past of Little 500, some people that have ridden uh, in Little 500 before, some people that are just cycling enthusiasts so evan just a whole lot of really cool stuff going on here and we'll see how it plays out on the virtual track yeah and this is all in preparation for the actual little 500 race which will be wednesday the men's and women's race will be held in bloomington for the first time in nearly two years brett what does that mean to you hearing that the actual race is coming to town soon well, I mean, just being a part of IUSF and kind of really setting up for the Little 500, it really is a great experience for not only the students, but for everyone. I mean, this race was canceled last year. There was a lot of events canceled last year, especially due to COVID. So I'm really just excited just to really that this event is getting hosted and it's really getting hosted in Bloomington. I cannot wait to see it, not only in person, but really this virtual Little 500 will get everybody really hyped up for the real thing coming this Wednesday. Doc, anything to add to that? No, you know, we've had to get, get a crash course, essentially, in understanding how virtual racing goes. But we have an expert that we can bring in who can talk a lot more yeah. about how this race works, what we're going to see today and tomorrow. Uh, Evan, let's go ahead and bring him in. Yep, joining us now is race expert Brad Soner. Brad, thanks for being here this morning. Thanks for having me, guys. It's going to be an exciting day of virtual racing. <laughs> Yeah, so Brad, kind of talk to us about what virtual racing means to the average viewer who doesn't really know what it is. 
Yeah, well, I'll say this. This is not the little 500 that uh, you raced in person. Virtual <laughs> racing is a whole new skill set of racing that uh, that you need to sort of acquire and learn. There's learning the game, learning the platform, and learning how to race. Now, today in the time trial, this is uh, pretty much all about power. It's all about the individual effort. In the game, the physics have been turned off. Now, tomorrow, they're going to have uh, basically real-life physics where riders can draft, they can run into each other, they'll have to slow down going into the corners. Today, to mimic a time trial, all that has been turned off. So it's basically just looking at the raw power of these riders. We're going to be measuring their power up at you can see in the top left of the screen along with their heart rate and that's really the key out there today it's all about the power numbers the tactics really go out the window on the time trial today so uh, this is all about uh, how much power you can create on the trainer let's try to put this in some context for the average viewer at home who maybe is not a cycling enthusiast but maybe has a peloton or has decided to start <laughs> to do this a little more at home what type of wattage are we talking about? How much power do you need to have in order to be competitive in a time trial like this? Yeah, so we really measure uh, watts per kilogram. That's sort of the golden ratio that we'll be looking at, which is how much power you create then compared to your body weight because uh, a heavier rider obviously needs to create more wattage in order to go forward. So we're going to be looking at somewhere between like three to five watts per kilogram, I think, at the high end today. That's going to be uh, right around the winner's area. So most of these riders you'll see averaging between maybe three to 500 watts for a good part of the race, and then they'll obviously need to put those sprint efforts in as well. We're going to be able to see their live wattage on the screen throughout the day today. We'll be able to follow uh, any of the riders around this virtual course and be able to see their live data on the screen as well. And it'll convert that down to their watts per kilo because the riders have to enter their body weight when they go to race. In fact, when we get to the higher level of racing at the pro level, there's a, a whole weigh-in procedure for these riders because that formula is so important to calculating the speed in the game. It's all about uh, the power to weight ratio. So that's really what you have to focus on today and uh, we'll keep an eye on those watch you can also see on the left hand side of the screen the uh, running list of riders now that's going to show the current order but you can also see their current watts per kilogram just to the right of their name so most riders sitting at just like one one and a half right now as they just kind of start to get warmed up for the ride but uh, you'll see that start to rocket towards the front now i will say one important thing about virtual racing is the start this is significantly different than a real life race start because when the clock hits zero on the game, it immediately starts registering your power. So the strategy in virtual racing is to get your power as high as you can when that clock goes down to zero so that when the race starts, you basically shoot off the line. You'll be able to tell which riders have raced on RGT before and which riders are new to the platform because the uh, experts here will have their power cranked up before the start. So as you get right, ready it, for sorry. about a minute, Sorry, we got about a minute and a half left until the race starts. Uh, how how much do you need to get yourself cranked up physically? Like, yeah, we've, we're seeing already. Like, I see Doug and Scott uh, already have their legs moving, and they have for a couple minutes now. I mean, how how high of a heart rate do you want to try to get? Like, where do you want to be physically as we go into this thing? Yeah, most of these riders will have been on the trainer for. 20 maybe 30 minutes before the start of the race it's really about kind of getting into that anaerobic zone you don't want to go too hard you shouldn't be in the red zone quite yet but you do want to be to the point where the engine is running the engine's running hot that's the important thing at the start we're also going to be able to see the zone that the riders are in as we get into the gameplay you'll be able to see the different colored zones it basically goes from green to red green being the lowest zone red being the highest zone so you would hope that those uh, power zones turn red at the start you'll see it both both uh, below the name, uh, floating above the rider, and they'll also have a power zone to the very left of their name on the rider list on the left-hand side of the screen. So we'll be watching that, but uh, yeah, you really wanna make sure that you ratchet that power up. So watch for all the names to go red across the line because that would show that uh, they're getting into their highest power zone. And Brad, what's really the strategy when it comes to a time trial race like this? Is it all excerpt? 100% all the way or do they want to conserve some energy? What do you think the strategy is going into today's time trial? Yeah, that's the art of the time trial. One of the hardest disciplines in bike racing is trying to time that just right so that you don't have anything left when you get to the line, but you also don't want to go too hard too early so that you blow up before you get to the line. So it's about timing it just right today. Mm -hmm. And well, we are about to be off here at the virtual 
time trial little 500 race in just a few seconds and now we are off it is exciting and we're really happy to be here brad thank you so much for kind of filling us in before the race starts thanks guys and now we, the racers are off you can see as everyone is starting to exert their energy and really get into their zones for today's race this is a quite a, a verdant looking track. We got a lot of trees going on. This is this is quite scenic as they roll through here. Uh, looks like I think Catanzaro perhaps off early here in the lead, and uh, one of the folks along with Doug Hackerton that was uh, the, on the, the trainer early on. So they're making some early time here already. And bigger staff right now in second place, and Hockleton in third place as the race has begun. You can see the kind of the colors that Kat and Zara and Bigger Staff are in. They're in that red capacity zone, so he doesn't really know how much power. They're exerting a lot in the beginning, and we'll see them kind of slow down and maybe get a little bit closer as the race continues in fourth place. Svobalda, fifth place is Reese, sixth Van Kooten, and seventh is Cameron right now. And we'll kind of see as that's going as it looks like Kat and Zara has a good amount of distance on him. He's about 70 meters ahead of Bigger Staff, who's in second place. And so far, he's about one point, a little over 1.5 kilometers into today's race. And although it's very, Go ahead, Brett. And although this is very quick, you can just see Kanzara kind of like having a great pace. And I'm really interested to see who's going to really just push the pace here early on and later in the race. And you can see as we're switching between these camera views, you're getting a different highlight of the statistics. They're on the left side as we're focusing on Scott Catanzaro, who's racing under the Next Esports team name here. Uh, but you can see the listing there, uh, that that weight per kilogram amount. And, and there's there's Scott. He's he's obviously got some <laughs> going here. He's focused. He's dialed in. Uh, you can see on that previous screen. Uh, the weight per kilogram that we heard Brett talking about earlier on, and then below that, the distance between each of the riders uh, as the, uh, they, they try to progress through this time trial. And there we go back. Already a couple of kilometers registered for the leader and about six and a half kilometers remaining. Going at a pretty quick clip here, not overdoing it per se, but, but certainly keeping a good margin. Uh, between themselves and the folks behind them in the pack. So uh, right now, it looks like Gonzaro, that weight per kilogram amount, significantly higher than bigger staff for Hackleton, and he's been able to maintain that pretty easily throughout the course of the first few minutes. Yeah, and so far it's been smooth sailing for Catanzaro. He's got a good lead over on Higger's staff, who is now up in second place. And you can really tell the kind of guys who are ahead are really the ones who know what they're doing and he came off strong warming up at the beginning and doing a really nice job right now of keeping that lead up and not exerting too much energy too early because even though it's a big lead we have seen in other races that the lead can be changed in a blink of an eye and right now he's about 342 meters above bigger staff is cat and zero in first place and here is i believe the lead woman parker who's in eighth right now, and on your screen you can see Voboda in fourth place. The number two Cat and rider is just going right past him. Yeah, the number two rider in this race right now, Darren Biggerstaff out of Pueblo, West California, racing for the Boulder Center for Orthopedic Cycling Team. A relatively late entrant in this race, didn't register until the beginning of this past week, but obviously came to lay some hot laps down here. This is a pretty exciting as uh, managed to keep at least some degree of contact with Catanzaro, who's been leading pretty much since the end of the first lap. Right, and Catanzaro came off strong. Yeah, Brett, all you. No, absolutely. We're just looking at the strategy here. I mean, like, you, you, you're really seeing these riders kind of, like, push the pace. But at the same time, really, Catanzaro, although he's in the lead, bigger stuff is also picking up the pace. But really, Catanzaro is really taking the lead here and really taking it strong. And Catanzaro's got about five kilometers left as we're going to go look at the lead women in just a moment. And there's Parker, Lee Parker, in the lead for the women. Lee Parker, a great story, was actually part 
of a, a co-ed team that tried to qualify for the Little 500 in 1979. Uh, unfortunately, didn't make it. And uh, this was long before there was an actual women's Little 500 race, which of course came about in the late 1980s. But uh, Lee, based out of California, great to see her having a, an excellent race so far. And I'm curious to see what she ends up doing here. Yeah, and Lee said to us that she, when she was at IU, she was racing on trikes, which is a huge change from what today is with the women's race and versus when you're riding in assembly hall on tricycles. And as you can see here, Scott Catanzaro, next eSport racer in the lead, 4.3 kilometers remaining for him. And he's got about 277 meters on Darren Biggins' scaff right there in second place. Bigger staff riding for the Boulder Center for Orthopedic Cycling team. And him onto the third place. Hackleton has about 236 meters. But Catanzaro really putting up a good race here as he's got almost 540 meters of a lead. Scott Catanzaro with a, a tremendous history in cycling as he. Uh, raced in the Little 500. He was actually a medalist at the Collegiate Track National Championships in 2009. Uh, he's the president of DT Racing and uh, obviously has been putting his experience and his training to pretty good use here. Guys, we're already past the halfway point of this race. We've only got about four kilometers remaining. Right, and I mean, you can see how big the kind of gap is between Cat and Zero, bigger staff, and then the drop off to Hickle. Hackleton and Zvoba right there, who's in fourth. There's Reese, David Reese in fifth place right now. But like Clavio has kind of touched on, you can really just tell that this is like a historic event. Not only that, you're seeing historic really riders like ex like participate in this race. And Canzaro has a great lead here. But overall, you just really see the experience from all the riders down the line from 1 through 12 here really show forth. Rick Van Kooten, who many of you, if you've been around IU for a while, are very familiar with Rick Van Kooten, as he is the executive dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, and also the father of our color commentator for the Women's Little 500 race, Caitlin Van Kooten. And great to see Rick out there on the trainer and uh, holding his own out there in sixth place so far. Mm -hmm. Having a really good day so far is Van Kooten. And you can see just ahead of him is Cat and Zero really working hard and really doing a great job of extending that lead. And another cool thing as we kind of get into the turn towards the, the, finish, the start finish line is all the different um, pictures on the side of the logos and banners that are around there. You can see classic Bloomington, you know, staples like Pizza X and Coca-Cola and different kind of things. And I think that's something really cool that's been worked into this kind of race. Well, I think the details really just stand out. I mean, Bloomington is such a staple. There's a lot of, a lot of really good details here. And I think just overall, they've done a really good job for this virtual World 500. Yeah, no, it's a great setup. And I think it's, you know, we've got some of the regular Little 500 advertisers that you're seeing flash by. I saw Pizza X there and, and a few others. So uh, good setup overall. We're back to Lee Parker here, who's eighth overall and, and really doing a great job of, of keeping pace and you know as we we talked to lee a little bit and you know i know brett uh when we were going back and forth over email lee is uh is over 60 at this point doesn't really ride a lot of long distances but is doing a really great job in this time trial as as uh has a nice pace and is keeping up a good ratio overall no absolutely yeah, as she's... a lead woman she's in eighth place Oops. yeah right all you <laughs> no, yeah, she's just really keeping a great pace and like, actually staying focused and I feel like her strategy has been like great overall. She obviously didn't get to that great start, but now she's staying at 8th eighth, eighth overall and really keeping a consistent pace. And Stephanie here's Stephanie Carey, Carey, the number two woman overall. She's currently sitting in ninth place right now out of all the riders in total. Having a really nice day too and just a little bit behind Lee Parker, but still doing a really nice job keeping pace and keeping in the top 10. Yeah, Stephanie out of Birdsboro, Pennsylvania was one of the earliest registrants for this individual time trial. So excited to see what she's able to do. And certainly within striking distance of Lee Parker for the, the top female spot in this, only about a, a half 
a kilometer back, although running out of time a little bit here as there's only about three and a half kilometers remaining in today's race. And here we go again, our leader, Scott Catanzaro of Next Esports. He's got about 800 in 70 meters remaining in the race, about one more lap to go. You can see him on your screen as well. He is live right now, really pushing full energy and trying to take home the title of the first time trial winner for the virtual little 500. He's run just a flawless race so far. I mean, didn't have the greatest of starts at the very beginning, but really uh, hit it right afterwards and has left everybody in the dust, I think. Uh, looking at the distance is uh, about a about a half kilometer ahead of everybody else and on uh, the bell lap here only about 400 kilometer or 400 uh, meters to go before this is over yeah and it's been a fantastic performance from all the riders and Tanzar has really just shown his experience and really has had a great performance so far you can see him out of the saddle there trying to really dig deep and get whatever's left in him and win this race as he's Closing in on the finish line and a good size lead over the number two Hager staff as he's coming to the finish. And there it is. Captain Zero wins the time trial. He's the first finisher of the day. Still some folks on the track, obviously, as Captain uh, Zero's pace pretty much impossible for anybody else to track. But uh, looking at the leaderboard here, Evan, we've got bigger staff, uh, you know, closing in, only about 250 meters remaining in his race, and then behind him, about 300 meters is Hackle. Mm hmm. And bigger staff has about 150 meters left to go, going into the final turn here. You can see him now on your screen. A really good run for him. Obviously, Catanzaro's time was great, but bigger staff, a great day to finish two in the virtual little 500 time trial. And you're just seeing everybody really push the pace here. Even though Katanzar had a great time, Biggersoft also had great pace and consistency. But you can kind of see that Katanzar is really just ahead of the field here. But you're also looking at everybody's strategy, and not only that, them pushing the pace. They're, they're putting up pretty good times, but Katanzar is just ahead and heels above everybody else. And Hackleton Racing for the U.S. Military Endurance Sports. He is crossing the finish line right here. And a great day for Doug Biggerstaff and Hackleton as well. And then coming up here in fourth place, we've got the, the person who's been in fourth place most of this, Matt Svoboda from Breckenridge, Colorado. Is, he's finishing up here in fourth place. Following him, it looks like it's going to be David Reese out of Manalapan, New Jersey. And then we've got Rick Van Kooten, uh trying to make a late run here to pick off fifth place, but it looks like Rick is going to finish up in sixth place overall. Mm -hmm. And here's Reese coming around to one of the final turns. He's got about 500 meters remaining in this race. So far, it's gone 8.29 kilometers in total. So a challenging race for sure today, but not that long. And as you can see, all the riders are really starting to get into that final 1.2 kilometer stretch here in the top 10 group. As here's Rick Van Kooten coming around. Got about 450 meters remaining. He's got one more lap to go here in the virtual time trial. You see his power history. He's, he's he put one of his best moments there power-wise in that last 15, 20 seconds or so. And David Reese now on the screen. As you can see him getting into that final turn as he is about to finish his time trial for today. Some really cool lights in the background of his um, virtual setup. I need I need I to have the back of my Zoom room. Jeez, where did that come from? <laughs> I was about to say, what an impressive setup from all these riders. I mean, especially David Reese here. I mean, just really impressive. Just trying to get, you know, all of it, you're just set up perfect and really just looks nice. Yeah, and I think the lights kind of add a whole other level to the kind of, you know, virtual you know state that they have because you know we're not in person so they got to make do with what they have and really good job there by Reese now you can see Lee Parker the lead woman right now she's got about 200 and 
or so meters left coming around in the final turn as she looks to be the first woman to finish today's race. Stephanie Carey behind her. She's got about 800 meters to go. So Lee Parker really, is going to be our first women's finisher of the day. You can really see the strategy here by Lee Parker. If you look at that power history graph underneath the main numbers, you see these big Mesa-like peaks and then some valleys as she gets her legs back under again and then is able to push forward. Uh, that seems to have worked. She finishes up as the top woman in today's time trial. Congratulations to Lee. Really great race run by her. And behind her, Stephanie Carey now, as she's got about 570 or so meters to go. She's got a total distance so far of 8.23 kilometers. Had a really nice day as the second women right now in total and a top 10 finish she looks to keep as she's about 5.29 kilometers in front of the next racer behind her. So as and Harry comes around here, you can see a little bit of a different strategy from Parker. She's kept out of a lower trajectory, but she's definitely ramped the power up here over the last quarter of a kilometer, finishing up this track. And this is, I think, going to be the last rider that we focused on. As all the riders that participated today, Evan, really doing an excellent job, a, a unique environment, maybe the first time some of them have done this before. But as Carrie comes across the line, uh, just a, a really, really nice set of rider performances across the board. Yeah, such a cool day for all of the riders participating in our first, you know, virtual little 500. Today's the time trial. Tomorrow, 10 o'clock is the women's race and 12 o'clock is the men's virtual little 500 race. And you can see the leaderboard, Scott Catton, Zero came in first, followed by Bigger Stat, Hackleton, Zavoda, Reese Van Kooten. Lee Parker, and then Stephanie Carey to round out the top 10. Brett, what is your takeaway from today's race? What did you think about everything that went on in today's time trial? Well, it was a fantastic performance from Lee Parker and Stephanie Carey, but Kanzar really just showed his world-class performance. I mean, he really pushed ahead right from the start and had a great strategy overall. But I feel like his just athletic ability and his experience really took over. Bigger stuff really had a great performance as well, even though he came in second place, but he really had a great strategy. I think overall the experience really showed from all of these riders. And coming up in just a moment, we'll get the final results. As here they are. Scott Catanzaro takes first place for next eSports with a total time of 11 minutes and 15 seconds. Bigger staff, 50 seconds behind him, followed in second place, followed by Hackleton, Sabota, Reese, Van Kooten, Thomas Cameron for Team Dirt and Lee Parker and Stephanie Carey are going to round out the finishers today. And now joining us again, race expert Brad Soner. Brad, thanks for coming in. Kind of give us some of your expertise on how you thought today's time trial went. I was blown away by Cotton Zaro's ride. That was a world-class virtual ride. Uh, you see on the right side of the screen, 5.5 watts per kilo. Not many riders out there that can do 5.5 uh, watts per kilo for this amount of time. Obviously, a little bit shorter, but to have an average of 5.5 on a ride, that is a, a pretty high number for Cotton Zaro. Now, he rides for the next esports team, which is one of the top esports teams in the country here in the U.S. So he's an experienced virtual racer. He obviously knows how to race on the platform as well, but putting out some pretty impressive numbers as well. Those are, uh, those are serious power numbers for Scott Catanzaro today. Cool. And what about our women's riders? How do you think they did? You know, uh, something that was interesting that you said earlier is kind of you said that they'd be in between that three to five um, watts per kilometer. What do, what do you think about the women riders today and really everyone in general who were in that three to five range that you were talking about before the race started? Yeah, I think the biggest thing I noticed in the women's race was the difference in strategy for uh, the last two women that we watched coming in. We talked about the power meter going up and down for one and a little steadier for the other. Those are, uh, I guess, two different strategies to racing on the virtual platform. Some riders like those short efforts and then try to recover, and some riders like the more traditional time trial. So that's where you see that uh, power graph or power curve kind of even out a little bit. Uh, those are usually riders that have a little bit of time trial experience on the road. They're a little better at 
modulating that power. But I thought it was interesting to see the, uh, the difference in strategy in our women's race. When we get to tomorrow's race, obviously, as you mentioned, it's going to be a little different than today. But, but how does having to take the physics into account and, and slow down in the turns and deal with drafting and so forth, how will that affect the sorts of strategies that we were talking about today where, where you had the, some of them just with pretty much straight lines as opposed to the peaks and the valleys that you discussed? Yeah, tomorrow is a whole nother game as we turn on the physics uh, on this RGT platform. We'll talk about drafting a lot because that is crucial on this uh, on this gameplay platform. You have to be right behind the rider in front of you. The riders will actually be able to see that on their screen. It's uh, kind of the video game element to virtual racing where you're trying to keep your avatar at just the right distance to the rider in front of you. So that's going to be crucial tomorrow. And then the turns as well. The game will automatically slow riders down as they go through the turn. Just like in real life, you can't take a 90 degree turn at 40 miles an hour. So the game will scrub that speed off until you're at a reasonable speed for the game. Any power that you put in over that speed is just wasted. It won't be registered in the game. So it's going to be important for the riders to understand that so that they can conserve their power in the corners and try to save as much as they can for the finish. Well, we got a really big day coming up then tomorrow. Brad, thanks so much for all of the great insight you gave today. And we're going to show the results one more time here before we wrap up and see you get everyone tomorrow. You can see Scott Catanzaro came in first, Bigger Staff in second, Hackleton third, Zavoda in fourth, David Reese in fifth, Rick Van Kooten, the media school dean in sixth, Thomas Cameron seventh, Lee Parker eighth, Stephanie Carey in ninth. Doc, Brett, we'll get one final thoughts from both of you before we head out. Brett, we'll start with you. What are your final thoughts? What are you looking forward to before tomorrow's race? Well, I think I'm looking forward to like the difference in strategy. Obviously, the time trial was really quick today. We really decided to raise power and athletic ability. But I think the experience of all these racers really showed today, and I cannot wait to see them perform tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to seeing some virtual Monroe County tomorrow as we're going to get a, <laughs> uh, a track that – takes you through Cascades and takes you down to Lake Monroe and all the way around. Uh, this is a course that a lot of folks are familiar with uh, in real life. Let's see how they do on the virtual side of things. It should be a really fun event. I hope you all join us tomorrow as we broadcast two different races on that same course, the women at 10 and then the men at noon. Yeah, and it's going to be such a fun day tomorrow. we got a lot of racing coming up. Tomorrow, for Brett Smith and Dr. Galen Clavio, I'm Evan Camico. 10 a.m. start time for the women's race tomorrow, 12 for the men's race. We'll see you tomorrow for the virtual Little 500. Sorry.